Alright. What up everybody? What I got for y'all today? First take debates. Saying that uh Save big money now to Nah, we ain't trying to save big money at Menards. Bring Menards big sale. Update your floors with Snapstone porcelain tiles. 12 by 12. Let's get out of here. Get out of this. Get straight to the, to, to the introductory, man. Don't go forward. All right. What up, everybody? What we finna talk about first take. Did Thomas deserve. First take debates. Did uh, Thomas deserve to be traded to the Lakers? I don't know about trading to the Lakers, but I didn't think he was going to be a good fit for the Cavs. I mean, the the system that he was in allowed him to score buckets like that. You know what I'm saying? To do his thing. Coming to the Cavs and on LeBron team, the ball got to go through LeBron. So basically, you play if you play basketball, you know when sometimes your coach, you got a superstar, and the, the coach tell you the ball got to touch this person every single play down. If it don't touch them, they are gonna get you out. And so basically, LeBron gotta touch the ball every single play down. And Isaiah need the ball in his hands to do so. So let's see what they say. Deserve this? Did Thomas deserve what? To be traded? Uh, well, look, there's a famous line from the movie Unforgiven where Clint Eastwood's character looks at another guy who honestly he's about to kill and the guy says, I don't deserve this. And he said, deserve's got nothing to do with it. That's sort of the lesson for Isaiah Thomas or for any of us really for that matter in life. I have some, um, I have some medicine to take. I have some crow to eat, you know, some penance to pay. I'm the guy that sat here for a year and said Isaiah Thomas is better than Kyrie Irving. A year Ooh. ago. I said the only trade the Cavs could win was if they could trade Kyrie to Boston and get Isaiah Thomas back. But here's the deal. Everything that Isaiah was a year ago, he's honestly been about 180 degrees the opposite this year. Last year, he was an inspiration. This year, he was a distraction. Last year, he was a leader. This year, he was a malcontent. Last year, he was fourth quarter, you know, Mr. Clutch. And this year, he couldn't even get on the floor. Right, because you know, he's hurt. Maybe this Come is on, the big you one in the end. You can't Last shoot a man year, when he's down, man. Like he was good hey. defense. But the Celtics knew how to hide his defense, and this year we know how bad Isaiah Thomas has been on defense. And that's the best example because the truth is that's not all his fault. You know, that's Ty Lue's fault. Brad Stevens knew what to do to hide that defense, and Ty Lue couldn't figure it out. But <laughs> life's not about fault. Ty Rue couldn't Many of these things are not all Isaiah Thomas's fault. But in the end, it's not about deserve. You didn't fit in. You didn't accept your role. You they, didn't take on the role that LeBron's willing to give you. They ain't give him a time. They ain't give him no end, time work, to deserve or not. None at all. Well, I mean, it was the wrong fit in Cleveland, clearly. And the reason, by the way, he couldn't finish in the in the paint was because he has a bad hip. When you're five foot seven, that too. When that you're too. five foot seven and you play a sport that selects out for height, you know, maybe one or two guys in the history of American team sports have done what Isaiah did at his height, a top five MVP finish then he hurts his hip things are different the circumstances change those teammates don't know him the same way no, he's don't. looking for a payday of course he's been underpaid his entire career isaiah thomas didn't change this much but his circumstances did and his reaction to those new circumstances have us with a very different opinion of him today isaiah thomas i've never quite seen a fall from grace in terms of the way someone is perceived this quickly consider and by the way, will you say hide him on defense? Last year he was hidden because he was on the bench in the fourth quarter and the Celtics won a playoff game. You know, like that's one way to hide him. Well, there's but, no doubt that no, Stevens did a better finish. job of I'm covering sure. up Isaiah Thomas. Sure, but it's not, like, it's not Isaiah's fault. He's, he's a small. You put him in a pick and roll, you got to compensate for it somehow. The point is this. Isaiah a year ago, not even a year ago, penned that article for the for the Players' Tribune about it was so heartfelt and amazing. This was about how upset he was about leaving Boston, how he embraced that town, the town embraced him, his family, how he felt like the Celtics were family, how he felt betrayed. He's looking on to Cleveland. He's going to play with the best player in the world. Think of your perception of Isaiah at that moment. Top five MVP finish, leads his team to a playoff run. Oh my God, this guy's been underpaid. His sister passes away. He deals with the whole thing. Unbelievable. This guy's everyone's... It's my favorite business, player. Man. It's Goes to the Cavs. Appears to be a distraction. Appears to alienate all of his teammates. His hip is bad. He can't play defense. We already know that. Also can't play offense until his hip gets better. I mean, then he gets traded to the Lakers, which he's got to love right now. And the first thing his agent does, which does reflect on him, is tweet out in all caps, he is not coming off the bench. 
I mean, every note he's struck, I don't think he's changed. Stephen A., he said the things he believed about the Cavs at the time, but he didn't have the credibility on that team to say it. He hadn't been there long enough. He wasn't playing well enough. And now his agent tweets this out. It just looks bad. Isaiah's the same guy. I love him. He, he really is my favorite player. But his fall from grace in terms of public perception in less than a year, I've never seen anything like it. Good when we're brothers represent um, <laughs> Isaiah Thomas. I'm assuming they they were the ones who said it because you said their agent. I didn't see the quote, but if they said something like that, it wasn't smart at all. Because actually at this particular juncture, Isaiah Thomas is best coming off the bench because he can lead the second unit. He has the ability he to can. score the ball when he's healthy. I, I and he can make it. noise that way and elevate, re-elevate his stock because it, it certainly but has plummeted right Lakers? now. now. Will, I don't disagree with players, anything that you said. Hurt, except so he can this. Come on and, and you didn't say this, but it sounds like that's the impression everybody's trying to give. I don't blame Isaiah Thomas for a lot of what has happened. This is a guy that averaged 28.9 points per game last year. He was one of the top four Damn, candidates to lead MVP honors. Okay? He gets hurt. Obviously, he was emotional when Danny Ainge first let him go. We can understand why. He never wanted to leave Boston. But he ends up in Cleveland. Who does he end up playing with? LeBron yes, it is James. the best player in the world in LeBron James. But somebody who is clearly and conspicuously ball dominant, sometimes who dribbles the ball 10 to 15 seconds at a time, relegates everybody around him to spot up shooters. And what <coughs> happens? If that's not your game and that's not what your success was predicated on, it's costing be, you. It's now, so we can easily sit up there and say, well, Oh, you can't be worried about that. Isaiah Thomas has got to be about the team, blah, blah, blah. This is an undersized individual who played like a giant last year, who's been repeatedly underappreciated and underpaid for years. And now yeah. you're in a position to cash in and everything gets ruined. Kyle Lowry signs for three years, $100 million. Bradley Beal, even though that's an off guard, $138 million. John Wall, a point guard, signs for $175 million. Mm, Steph Curry signs for over $200 million. Yeah. Chris Paul turns down plus $200 million. I'm saying if you're Isaiah, you may not deserve that dollars for those guys but you certainly deserve something within the ballpark at the time right. so you know you got injured you're coming back and you're looking to finally get your moment your day your payday and all of this stuff gets in the way oh, and we're asking dang. him as human beings to stomach all of that and find a way to get over it when i don't know if any of us but could if you want wow yeah Tell me what y'all think, man. I didn't think Isaiah deserved that, man. They treated him like, you know what I'm saying? They thought that he was going to be the player that he that he was. But coming off a, a hip injury, I had a hip injury, too. I got my whole hip replaced. So I know what he's feeling, man. You know what I'm saying? They probably went in there and did some, did some things to his hip. But I, I can't do too, many, too much of the stuff that I used to do. So, you know what I'm saying? So, him trying to get out there and and drive to the hole like that, it's scary, man. I was just outside shoveling my snow. Man, I, I could have kept, you know what I'm saying, kept my balance. But I fell on my ass because I was scared I was going to hurt my hips. So, I kind of just like tried to cushion it with my butt. So, Isaiah got a long ways to go, man. I hope he recovered and I hope he gets his payday that he needs. Because he's been underpaid for years. But it don't look like he's going to get paid. Because people are talking about him saying he's not the same Isaiah. All right, let me know in the comments down below what you think. If he deserve it or not. All right, man. Peace out.